what's the best things to to do to get the nines and tens i struggle to get the top top women uh there's much less room for error you have to have your mindset rock solid you have to have your strategy rock solid and you have to have worked your way up nobody goes from like you know having options with like a five or six to suddenly having options with a nine or ten like most guys <clears throat> that i train like a lot of them will come on the on the training at, like on a boot camp or something they'll be like hey just so you know i only want to sleep with nines and tens and i'm like yeah cool right like everybody does um they're the hottest girls have you ever slept with a nine or ten before no you ever slept with an eight and a half no you ever slept with an eight no you ever slept with a seven and a half no you ever slept with a seven uh, one time or almost, or, and, and the point isn't to be like, ha ha, like you're a loser. The point is, is like, <laughs> you have to work your way up to it, right? What, what happens is you become good with sevens in general, right? And then you, you punch above your weight and you go out with a 7.5 and maybe you're a little extra nervous and you, you don't want to fuck it up because you don't want to go back down to a lower quality. And so maybe you try to overgame it or you put too much pressure on yourself or you overanalyze stuff or you, you get in your head uh, during the date or during the cold approach because it's a big deal to you and you don't want to fuck it up. And that paradoxically, or ironically, I should say, causes you to fuck it up because you're trying to overgame it and it's a big deal. And the good news is that's normal and it happens at every level until you get to the top and then you're like bulletproof. Once you can be like cool like cool calm collected confident with the nine five full package stunners right or 10 I don't, I don't really think there are like true tens because there's always like something you can improve it's, you know it's a, it, show me a girl where like you can't improve something right so that's why i always say nine nine point five but <clears throat> to get those girls you have to have gotten very good with landing nines and nine point fives in general and you only do that through like working your way up in the ranks. And as you do that, you make less mistakes in the game. You carry yourself with a better presence. You're more comfortable in your own skin. Your mindset is more ingrained. Your confidence is stronger. You've evolved your personality and how you showcase yourself and how you market yourself to these girls. And your frame is very strong, right? The way that, the way that you can handle situations and so on and so forth. And you become like the female 10 at that point because you have a whole bunch of like i'm my rotation of like 17 girls like they're all extremely hot they're all super cool it's it's like the best ones that i kept around as i'm plowing new ones you keep the hottest coolest ones with the best chemistry and, and that you have the best sex with and when you have a bunch of nines and nine fives or, or at least the ability to, to generate new nine five like dates with new nine fives and, and new sex opportunities with new nine fives, then they're not a big deal to you anymore. And they're a big deal to everyone else, like a super big deal. And so it's like feast or famine, right? It's like you're either getting none of them or, or you, you have access to a lot of them. And, and so you have to work on your sexual market value and your game strategy and tactics and work your way up using what I say. And a lot of guys will, will sleep with their first nine or 10 at around 50 lay count. Okay. And I know a lot of you watching are virgins or, or single digit lay count. There's nothing wrong with that. But the good news is you can sleep with your first nine or 10 in like the first year of like doing proper game, right? Because a lot of guys are able to get one to two new girls per week using my system. So that comes out, so there's 52 weeks in a year, it comes out to 52 to 104 girls per year. And usually around the 50 mark, give or take a little bit, is where you'll finally hit like a, a really stunning girl. So what a lot of guys do in practice, regardless of what level they're starting at, they work their way up using my systems. They evolve and, and optimize their, their personality and how they carry themselves and how they do their game. And then they are like ready for the stunner girls. And then they get one and oftentimes they make that their girlfriend. So that's a very rewarding process. And you're a totally different person than, than you were when you started in a, in a very good way, right? You're a lot more confident. Things aren't that big of a deal if they don't go your way. You're very comfortable in your own skin. You drive your own value internally. You're not basing it on external reactions or external opinions from girls. Um, so, 
you know, that, that's the whole point of doing all this is you're evolving your strategy and tactics. You're evolving how you carry yourself and you're optimizing your, your sexual market value so that you can compete at the highest level with the best girls. And don't listen to all the red pill retard coaches that say all hot girls are terrible or all hot girls have nothing to offer or all hot girls are just huge sluts and blah, blah, blah. That's complete nonsense. And what they're basing that off of is a tiny subsection of women in Miami that are like only fans trash, right? And they're like, look, this is all hot girls. And it's like, no, it's not. I know for a fact it's not because I've dated hot girls all around the world and I've gotten tons of students to sleep with hot girls and, and get into relationships with them. So you can't simply say all hot girls are, are terrible. That's a, a cognitive dissonance, rationalization, and cope that guys that can't get nines and tens use to justify in their mind the fact that they can't get nines and tens, right? So it's basically like, you know, like with like Myron Gaines, it's, oh, well, I don't want them anyways, right? That, that's his whole kind of take. And with that email that I showed where he, he requested coaching from me years back, he said he was banging girls between a four and an eight. And notice how that does not include nines and tens. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's difficult to fuck the hottest girls because they have unlimited options and you have to really bring your A game, but it's within reach for most guys. You just have to develop your sexual market value and your strategy and tactics in your internal mindsets to a, to a degree that is going to put you in the running for those girls. And once you've gotten one or two of them, it like tips the dominoes and, and you can just, it's not a big deal anymore, right? The, the, a 9.5 will feel like a seven. And I know you can't understand that right now, but that's how it becomes. And that way, like you don't even need to put up with any shit at all, right? Like some of them are like, well, I'm a nine, I'm a nine five, so I can behave however I want and, and be a huge bitch or a huge asshole to everybody or to whoever I want and people will tolerate it. And that's true. Most people will tolerate it. You don't have to, right? Like I hear lots of feedback from these girls like, oh my God, like you called me out of my shit. Like nobody's ever done that. Like I really respect that. They don't want a guy that's a pushover. They don't want a guy that can just walk all over and that's going to be a doormat and be like, hey, like keep, you know, you're welcome to do that anytime. They lose respect and attraction for guys like that. It also doesn't mean to be trigger happy, like ready to boundary the girl at any, at any second just because you're going to show that, that you're the guy that can exert boundaries. No, you give her the benefit of the doubt. You treat her like a normal chick. You have good times with her. If she pulls bullshit of any form, you call it out. And if it's serious enough, you cut her off, right? Or, or if it's a recurring thing, you cut her off. And, oh, but she's hot. Who cares? There's other ones that are hot that aren't going to pull stupid bullshit. So once you can get over the fact that like, oh, she's hot and you can just treat her like a normal person, which is what all she is anyways in the first place and, and how she wants to be treated. But everybody else is kissing her ass. Everybody else is like, wow, you're so beautiful. You're so perfect. Did, did you know how beautiful you are? Oh, did you know how uh, amazing you are? And they're like, yeah, thanks, loser. Everyone else is doing that. Let everybody else do that. Let everybody kiss their ass. Let everybody, you know, bend over backwards for them. And that, that doesn't mean you need to treat them bad either. You just need to treat them like a normal person, right? Where, where you're not like mesmerized by her beauty or, or, or otherwise, you know, entranced, <laughs> right? So... And this is coming from a guy that's fucked shit tons of hot girls all around the world. If you don't believe me, go join our Discord and look in our in the receipts channel. And, and I post a new one every day. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a good summary of, of what to do to fuck uh, the nines and tens. But it's a goal worth achieving, right? Don't listen to these red pill guy. Oh, they're all terrible. No, they're not. Like newsflash and, and using common sense can can validate this. Hot girls are awesome to hang out with and fuck, right? Because they're way hotter than everybody else. So the sex is way better, significantly way better, right? And there's plenty of hot chicks that have cool personalities and, and that are going to respect you and, and have like an awesome time with you. So, and, and when you have like the ability to procure new ones, and, or even if you have multiple on rotation, then that precludes you from having to put up with any other shit. Right? You shouldn't have to anyways, even if you didn't have any other ones on rotation. But 
you can like stand up for yourself. You can cut them off. You can let shitty behavior, you know, disgust you and, and actually really lose interest in them. And one other like side caveat, and we'll go on to another question <clears throat> is once you get used to like fucking the shit out of really hot ones, you can last a long time in bed as well. So when I bang like a nine five, a lot of times they've never had sex with guys for more than like five minutes because guys can't like mentally handle how hot they look when they're naked and when they're like fucking the girl. So a lot of them, like a lot of the guys like bust prematurely, like one of the hottest girls <clears throat> that I've banged in, in Sao Paulo, she's like a, a mega model. She, she has like perfect body, like perfect face. And she's like, yeah, like most guys last like a couple minutes, like five minutes max. And she's like, you can fuck me for hours. And I've never done that before. And I love it. And I'm, I've never orgasmed this many times before. And orgasm is strong and all this shit. And, and so she's like hitting me up all the time, not just because of the sex, but also because I carry myself like the man without being a fucking prick about it, without being an arrogant asshole about it, like a guy like Tate or any of these like fake alpha, fake tryhard fucking losers act. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm the man because I smoke cigars and I wear indoor shades and I, and I talk about planes and Bugattis all the time. So therefore, I'm the man. Right. And I say a lot of dumb, attention getting, provocative shit, like a child stomping around in a toy store so that everyone will look at me and, and notice me. Right. That's the mark of a huge fucking insecure, try hard loser. Girls are not attracted to that. They're attracted to a guy that's comfortable in his own skin, that's acting like the man, right? That rails the fuck out of them and, and stands up for himself if they try to fuck with him. Right. That's what they want. Now, I'm speaking from experience, lots of experience. Right. Um, and again, if you don't believe me, I'm posting daily receipts with really hot girls. Right. I don't see any other fucking dating coach posting hot girl receipts. I'm posting them daily and I, and I have several hundred. <clears throat> so, um, you know, that's one of the side benefits. Is when you get to that level, you can get a lot of them and you're basically untouchable at that point And you're at the top of the food chain. Right, these these female nine fives and, and tens are kissing your ass, hitting you up, and wanting to get fucked and, and falling falling in love with you and shit, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> and it's awesome, right? It's awesome when they're like, oh, everybody, like like the really hot one in Sao Paulo. She's like, oh, like this one guy just like touched his dick and he came, <laughs> right? So when you can like rail the fuck out of them until they're like out of energy, you're giving them like a new experience. They'd never, they'd never, uh, had before. I said, fuck the industry and did it my way. My way. I learned how to roll a weed. I didn't roller skate. Nah. Go in the back. Y'all look at the lake and I meditate. Yeah. All I need is one scale, a couple bells. Came in this shit by myself. Dolph, why you fuck this girl? Oh uh, shit. Cause I'm a player. Quarterback, no NFL. Hey.